Let us for a few moments concentrate on the divine form of Sri Ramakrishna and pray to him for peace and prosperity for the whole humanity. Shant, shanti, hari, om, that's a peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om, stapakaya jadharmasya, Sarvadharma Swarupine Stavaka Yajadharma Sya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avadar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Asato ma sad gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityor ma mrithangamaya Om Shanti 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 let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, who devoted his whole life for spreading the spiritual message to the humanity. whose life is the light of knowledge. If we study his life, surely we will be freed from troubles, we are facing in this world. Sri Ramakrishna has given simple but very effective instructions to practice. We have come to Sri Ramakrishna. We have just now meditated on Him. It has got tremendous significance. The spiritual power works in a mysterious way. It may not be visible to us, but we feel the effect of it. If we wholeheartedly pray to the Divine, even for a few moments, gives lot of peace. Spiritual ideas, spiritual life have tremendous bearing on us. It is true, as long as we are in this world, 
we are to face number of difficulties. Nobody can escape from them. But we must know how to bear those difficulties and continue our spiritual journey. Sri Ramakrishna again and again said the most important teaching of Sri Ramakrishna throughout the pages of gospel in some form or other he says it is possible to see God. It is possible to see God. Straightforward, simple but forceful. Sri Ramakrishna, the personification of truth, he is telling. It is possible to see God. That means to see God in this world. That is why it has got great significance. Suppose I say we can see God after death. It makes no sense. We don't know what will happen after death. Nobody knows. Nobody can definitely say where the soul has gone. Once the soul has left the body, the soul itself does not know what body he had before. Whether a male body, whether a female body, whether a human body, whether a demon body or whether an animal body, whether a plant body, it doesn't remember anything. Once the body is cast off, all the adjuncts, what we call upadhis, connected with the body, are dropped away. In one way the soul is free, it is out of the cage. We are imprisoned as it were in this body, in the senses. We helplessly watch things going on. Helplessly. We know it should not be, but it, it does. It goes that way. I know mind should not go this way, but mind runs that way. We have to suffer helplessly. So the need of Assurance, the need of seeing God in this very life is very important. And Sri Ramakrishna has come to show that it is not a myth, it is not imagination. God is more real than anything else in this world. You can see God, you can talk to Him, you can communicate with Him through all your qualities. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, once first He says it is possible, That's the first important affirmative which should encourage us 
to step into spiritual path then shri ramakrishna tells once the goal is set once you are definite i am able to see god in this very life then the next step would be to make little effort to engage ourselves in spiritual activities very important spiritual activities the more we do the better in fact uh, in this context i am happy to recollect how we had a wonderful program in ganges gayatri mahayagna really it was a remarkable event which was done according to vedic tradition at least some of the people have tried to live up to the standard to follow the traditions to undergo little discipline not too severe little discipline what great joy it gives what great impression it creates on the mind everybody is happy after the ceremony was over it is spiritual joy which is incomparable i was really very happy and thrilled to see such program we must engage ourselves that way it is difficult to organize spiritual activities it is difficult to spare time to such things but effort should be made little effort on our side then how everything will come by itself somebody will come and help us and show us the way further so when shri ramakrishna said like this master mahashay a remarkable householder devotee where do we find such a person ideal householder we should say who would shed tears of joy by just remembering shri ramakrishna his whole life the latter part of his life was spent in prayers and meditation his whole life was in ecstasy what he had to achieve he got what is god realization he understood he was face to face in front of god himself he is talking to god himself and for the first time he is realizing how god would be how he behaves how he loves how he showers his grace upon everyone that is why he is called kripa sindhu ocean of grace kripa ocean of grace so master mai say thought he was married he had children so a doubt crossed his mind is it possible to realize god people may talk we know the difficulty somebody else may tells many things but the, the person who is at it knows how difficult it is 
He admits. He says, I am a married man, I had children. Is it ever possible to see God, to experience that ecstasy, to get freedom, to get release from bondage? When the doubt crossed in his mind, Sri Ramakrishna just said, Surely one can. Surely one can realize God. No matter what he is. Through the grace of God, it should be possible to see him. How beautifully the idea is given. Grace of God. But grace of God is a mysterious power. It's a, it works in a very subtle way. We have to be prepared to receive that grace. We must be very fortunate to be touched by the loving grace of God. God is near him who sees him inward with the eye of love. Whenever the idea of God comes, let alone loving, always the attitude is demand. Why God is so unkind to me? Why He is not giving me a good job? Does He not know I am suffering in the home? I am not able to pay my bills? I am undergoing so much of poverty? What God is doing? If God is not helping me, I don't want that God. So with this, with this quarreling attitude, with this fighting mood, how can you appreciate God? You will never be able to understand Him until you prepare yourself properly to receive Him. God is very close to us. We feel His companionship only when we cherish proper love towards God. There is an instance Sri Ramakrishna one day was in Bhava Samadhi in ecstatic mood. He was totally absorbed in spiritual ideas. The mind was in a very high state, in a higher plane. He saw a vision. In that vision, he saw a tank, Haladar Pakur. One villager had gone there to fetch water. Sri Ramakrishna is observing him. What was he doing? He was removing the weeds which, has, which had covered the water completely. Then he was examining it now and again, taking it up in his hand. So, referring to this incident, Sri Ramakrishna observes that it has got great significance just as water can never be seen unless one removes the weeds on the surface, love of God and realization of God cannot be achieved if one does not make effort towards that end. 
you will appreciate grace you will understand the significance of grace you know how everything is going on by his grace you will be awakened by grace only through little effort what is that effort that also shri ramakrishna defines not doing anything and everything can be called as effort you do everything and say it is effort that's how we always we are we do everything and call it spiritual no you have to follow the correct ways then only it can be classified as spiritual or not so here effort means spiritual activity not going and sitting in the laboratory for 12 hours i did my effort karma yoga i did one guest had come here about a few years back another guest also came with him there were two guests staying with us they came to me one guest is introducing the another to me swami ji he is a great karma yogi first sentence then he is explaining further he thought by asking me he said swami ji he is a great karma yogi early morning 6 o'clock he goes to the farm he cultivates the whole land comes back night and he gives he gets a bumper crop and he sells the produce in the market and he is very happy he calls that karma yoga there is a tendency for us call everything by whatever you want <laughs> it carries that is why it has become it has lost its meaning even the word god has lost its meaning as to, so to say because we have not given proper care and attention to the values so here shri ramakrishna is specifying what is effort it is repeating the name of god singing is glories these are shri ramakrishna's words mark them mark them repeating the name of god singing is glories offering prayers performing charity and participating in sacrifices these are all the holy activities that lead one to god when we are engaged in these activities mind is raised to a particular level and you will feel and you will experience the joy of grace when we see the sun we see it with the sun's own light is it not because sunlight is there so we are able to see the sun no other light is required for that even so we see the lord through his grace alone through his grace
once shri ramakrishna visited uh, keshav chandra sen <coughs> he was suffering from ailments who is free from suffering whether a spiritual man or a worldly man or this man or that man everybody has to suffer suffering is a part of experience whether you like it or not you have to have it that's the beauty of it if you must have it then don't dislike it to that extent you will be able to bear bear with and survive so shri ramakrishna was, was talking with them in the course of his talk he was referring to the people there are people and people all are not same there are people who are very active from the worldly point of view in the midst of their intense worldly activities they pray to god and shri ramakrishna appreciates them they are the heroes the activities did not make them stop praying to god they are striving for god realization while carrying heavy loads on their heads shri ramakrishna calls them real heroes the householders who are struggling very hard who have come to spiritual path with all difficulties they are able to come they are able to sit in the class they are able to make the mind sit for a few moments everything is done by herculean effort i know it's not so easy even coming to the chapel it requires a lot of planning you have to drive you have to make strong will sometimes you will while coming you may mind may change and so coming to chapel may go somewhere it happens it's not easy to have that determination so shri ramakrishna is appreciating in spite of all these shortcomings they are struggling they are struggling and god is ready to help them to give them peace it may be extremely difficult shri ramakrishna admits that he doesn't he doesn't say it is very simple he knows it is very difficult but then shri ramakrishna makes a remark is there anything however hard that cannot be achieved through god's grace his grace makes even the impossible possible then shri ramakrishna gives the example if the lamp is brought into a room that has been dark a 1000 years does it illumine the room little by little the room is light all at once so these reassuring words gladdened the hearts of keshav and other household devotees so all the depression was just washed away by the spiritual power emanated from shri ramakrishna he could just wash them away all the people they felt immensely peaceful that feeling of 
peace itself is a grace otherwise you can't get peace very important quality that is required to get to experience the grace of god is that we should be honestly simple the more simple the more we come near to god you know there is a devotee by name ramchandra dat a great household devotee he could spend many days with uh, shri ramkrishna and he had heard shri ramkrishna's teachings many times his whole life has undergone total transformation by contact with shri ramkrishna towards the latter part of his life his whole mind was on shri ramkrishna nothing else if people come there and talk about he would immediately say don't talk anything other than shri ramkrishna or his teachings in front of me if you want to talk you are welcome please talk somewhere else not here at least i want to hear about shri ramkrishna and his teachings i don't relish any other talk he was so sincere because he knew the value of shri ramkrishna's teachings the value of remembering his teachings more and more so that it becomes part and parcel of our being constantly thinking it gives it creates wonderful impression on the mind so it raises you to the sattvic mode which is very essential to experience grace and he was telling to his people he where he had been to simla he was suffering from ailments some asthma etc during those days there was no proper medical treatment people had to suffer so finally he he thought he might not live so he told the people well let me go back to my place that is kankur kach yoga dhyan in calcutta it's calcutta suburb please take me there that was his home please take me there immediately i don't want to spend any more time here in simla let me pass my body there because that place is holy for me shri ramkrishna has come there many times and he has blessed the place and i want to cast off this body there but the household people the other people you know if you tell one thing they do another way <laughs> so they were not uh, giving due attention to what he said because they knew that uh, the climate in calcutta suburb was worse than uh, what he is enjoying now in simla so according to their worldly calculations it was not good for ramchandra dat to move away from simla to yoga dhyan but he was very insistent and then he came to all oh, these people are not doing anything now i have to take action on myself so he ordered some people so some, some palanquin to be brought and simply walked out he came to the place and then he instructed the people he just lived there five days more then he left his body before leaving the body he told the people look any day i may pass away this body is burnt you collect the ashes one casket of ash you bury it at the entrance entrance of the building so whoever passes into the building must pass through that so that he was very definite the devotees of shri ramkrishna would come 
in large numbers to see the place to be blessed by Sri Ramakrishna because Sri Ramakrishna's relics he had kept. It is a very holy place. If you happen to go to Calcutta, you may please visit that place. It belongs to Ramakrishna Mission. So his idea was let the dust of the feet of the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna be constantly pouring on my head. See that feeling. It was so humble. He became so humble, thorough, that simplicity. If we develop, you will immediately receive the grace of God. What is the meaning of receiving the grace of God? You will have the vision of God. You will know the truth and you will enjoy supreme peace. There is the value of grace. Another instance is there. One devotee, I think his name is Manmohan. One day he was walking through in the street, somebody was criticizing Sri Ramakrishna. You know, there are always people to criticize. Not knowing. Even if they know, they may not know properly. Anyway, when Manmohan came to know this, he became very angry, furious and he began to scold that person severely. Look, if you talk any word more, I will teach you a lesson. So in a way, in a way he forced him to shut up his mouth. Then afterwards, this incident has happened and then Manmohan went to see Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ram, as soon as he saw Manmohan, Sri Ramakrishna is making a statement. Why should one become angry? He knows the whole incident. And Manmohan was surprised. Sri Ramakrishna came to know everything. And Sri Ramakrishna is telling in a general way, pointing to this reference. Why should you become angry? Hmm? What does it matter if a person criticizes me or praises me? I should not be shaken by any of these things, either praise or censure. And Sri Ramakrishna explains further. Suppose he praises me. Is it possible for me to give him six jars of gold? I don't have so much gold to give him. Suppose he criticizes me. Can I beat him and uh, teach him a lesson? I don't have that power. <laughs> so he does. I don't want any of this. I am. Let them do what they want to do. So that equanimity, that's a tremendous spiritual quality. Equanimity. If you are free from ego, then you are not hurt by anybody. If you feel you are important, you are somebody, then you are sure to be hurt by, by some things. Even people may not criticize. Even by seeing the things while walking, you may feel hurt. Some things are not uh, you, to your liking, you may feel displeased. Oh, I am not happy. This road is very crowded. So, so, we have to develop that kind of simplicity and humility, then you will understand the value and greatness of grace. So what Sri Ramakrishna is telling, to summarize what I have talked all this time, conduct ourselves, to engage ourselves in spiritual activities more intensely, more honestly, giving our whole being into that. We mean what we, what we are doing. We are not wasting the time. We are not wasting the time. Every minute is golden. We have used the time in a very valuable way. So like this, the devotees are to be trained properly. The spiritual aspirants must be trained properly. Those who come to spiritual path are to be trained properly. Why this temple is constructed, why the services are there, 
every day vesper service morning service all these things because it is not possible for every home to have all such things in their home at least here this place is provided all of you can come and sit and have that activity done so to make easy in spite of all difficulties you are undergoing it is possible to maintain your spiritual fervor and to continue your spiritual practices so that you may receive god's grace and make your life peaceful and blessed <coughs> page 334 at 9 o'clock in the morning shri ramkrishna was standing on the southeast veranda near the door of his room with ramlal by his side rakhal and lachu were moving about yam arrived and prostrated himself before the master shri ramkrishna said to him affectionately you have come that's very good today is an auspicious day it was friday it was the last day of the bengali month and the day of the full moon m was going to spend a few days with the master practicing spiritual discipline the master had said to him if an aspirant practices a little spiritual discipline then someone comes forward to help him the master had said to yam you should not eat every day at the guest house of the kali temple the guest house is intended to supply free food to monks and the destitute bring your own cook with you yam had accordingly done so the master arranged a place for the man to cook and he asked ramlal to speak to the milkman about milk a little later ramlal began to read from the adhyatma ramayana the master and yam listened while he read rama had married sita after breaking the great bow of shiva on the way to ayodhya with his bride Rama was confronted by the warrior sage Parashuram who was about to make trouble for him Parashuram threw a bow at Rama and challenged him to string it Dasharatha Rama's father was seized with fear with a smile Rama took the bow in his left hand and strung it then prostrating himself before rama parashuram worshiped him as the supreme brahman as shri ramakrishna listened to parashrama's hymn he went into a spiritual mood and now and then chanted the name of rama in his melodious voice then the master asked ramlal to read about guhaka ramlal read guhaka the paraya was chief of the untouchables and an intimate friend of rama when rama sita and lakshman were starting into the forest to redeem dasharatha's pledge guhaka ferried them across the river rama embraced guhaka tenderly and told him he was going to spend 14 years in exile wearing the bark of trees and eating the herbs fruits and roots that grew in the woods he promised to visit guhaka again on his way back to ayodhya after the period of exile was over the pariya king waited patiently but when the 14th year had run out and rama had not returned guhaka lighted a funeral pyre he was on the point of entering it when hanuman arrived as rama's messenger in a celestial chariot rama and sita soon appeared and guhaka's joy was unbounded after the midday meal shri ramakrishna lay down on his bed to rest m was seated on the floor presently dr shama and a few devotees arrived 
the master sat upon the bed and began to converse with them. Master said, It is by no means necessary for a man always to be engaged in his duties. People talk too much about duties, you know. Sri Ramakrishna is telling here. Actions drop away when one realizes God as a flower drops of itself when the fruit appears. He who has realized God no longer performs religious duties such as the Sandhya. In his case, the Sandhya merges in the Gayatri. When that happens, it is enough for a person to repeat just the Gayatri Mantra. Then the Gayatri merges in Om. After that, one no longer chants even the Gayatri. It is enough then to chant simply Om. How long should a man practice such devotions as a Sandhya? As long as he does not feel a thrill in his body and shed tears of joy while repeating the name of Rama or of Hare. People worship God to win money or a lawsuit. That's not good. A devotee said, We find that everyone strives after money. Even Keshub Sen married his daughter to a prince, Master said. Keshub's case is quite different. God provides everything for a genuine devotee, even without his making any effort. The son of a real king gets his monthly alliance. I am not talking of lawyers and men of that sort who go through suffering in order to earn money and who become slaves of others to that end. I am speaking of a real prince. A true devotee has no desire. He doesn't care for money. Money comes to him of itself. Gita describes such a devotee as content with what comes to him without effort. A good Brahmin without any personal motive can accept food even from the house of an untouchable. He does not desire it, it comes of its own accord. A devotee asked, Sir, how should one live in the world? Sri Ramakrishna answered, Live in the world as a mud fish lives in the mud. One develops love of God by going away from the world into solitude now and then and meditating on God. After that one can live in the world unattached. The mud is there and the fish has to live in it but its body is not stained by the mud. Such a man can lead the life of a householder in a spirit of detachment. The master noticed that M was listening to his words with great attention. Master looking at him, One can realize God if one feels intense dispassion for worldly things. A man with such dispassion feels that the world is like a forest on fire. He regards his family as a deep well. If he really feels that kind of dispassion, he renounces home and family. It is not enough for him to live in the world in the spirit of detachment. Lust and gold alone is Maya. If Maya is once recognized, it feels ashamed of itself and takes to flight. A man put on a tiger's skin and tried to frighten another man. But the latter said, Oh, I have recognized you. You are our Hari. Hare, Hare. At that the man dust in the skin went away smiling to frighten someone else. All women are the embodiments of Shakti. It is a primal power that has become woman and appears to us in the form of women. It is said in the Adhyatma Ramayana that Narada and others praised Rama, saying, O Rama, thou alone art all that we see as male, and Sita, all that we see as female. Thou art Indra, and Sita is Indrani. Thou art Shiva, and Sita is Shivani. Thou art man, and Sita is woman. What more need I say? Thou alone dost exist wherever there is a male and Sita, wherever there is a female. To the devotees, one cannot renounce by the mere wish. There are prarabdha karma, inherited tendencies and the like. Once a yogi said to a king, Live with me in the forest and think of God. The king replied, That I can't very well do. I could live with you, but I still have the desire for enjoyment. If I live in this forest, perhaps I shall create a kingdom even here. I still have desires. 
Natabar Panja used to look after his own cows in this garden during his boyhood. He had many desires. Hence, he has established a cast oil factory and earned a great deal of money. He has a prosperous cast oil business at Alam Bazaar. We shall stop here. It is easy but difficult. That's the comment. <laughs> easy to hear, difficult to practice. It is true. I know. It is difficult because it is difficult because we are not practicing it. So it becomes easy when you start doing something. How to start doing something? You must develop interest in it. You must aspire for it. Without aspiration you can't do. You must aspire for learning something. Then you will take you will feel joy to even make effort. At least I feel that way. Suppose I, I hear a good uh, bhajan, immediately the desire comes to me. I must learn that bhajan. I go and I make my effort and I try to take the script and note down and I'm prepared to spend three, four or five hours. But I feel happy over it. Why? Because I like it. So liking you must develop. Once you develop that liking for spiritual life, you will be wonderful. And difficulties are nothing. Difficulties come, but they come and go. Agama Payanaha. They come and go. Ayaram Gayaram. <laughs> In Hindi they say. Performance of sacrifices. You can take any any sacrifice that helps you towards unfoldment of your spiritual personality. For example, engaging yourself in selfless activity is also a kind of sacrifice. You are sacrificing your time for doing some service in the temple. And sometimes you may participate in certain types of spiritual programs, such as what I said, they did Gayatri Mahayajna. It's a sacrifice. But they all came and they were wearing yellow dress and they took up Diksha and they, they repeated 1008 times Gayatri. It was amazing, amazing. And coming away from their home and coming to that countryside and it's a tapo bhumi. If you, if you see Ganges, how beautiful it is. Remarkable. Vast land. You, you will never see any home there. Even once you're there, wherever you see, you see only trees and trees and trees. Vanadevata. Only trees all around. Full of trees. They are inviting you. They are blessing you with their uh, breeze, you know, soothing breeze. They cool your nerves. Even you, when you enter the Ganges, you feel that uh, feeling. But you must go with a prepared mind. It, that, like that. And suppose you, suppose a group of people, about five, ten people, they want to have some Japa Yajna, they want to do whole day. One weekend, instead of whole day gossiping, whole day you come and do japa, repeat Lord's name. And whole day you do bhajans by turns. Suppose you ten, twenty people all join together, one by one you can sing. So like that, these are all spiritual activities. So one is, sacrifices mean the rituals. For example, there are so many uh, sacred uh, hymns are there. For example, Alta Sahasrama, Chandi, Chandi part, and thousand names of Vishnu, Vishnu Sahasrama, thousand names of Ganesha, whatever it is. Thousand names of Ramakrishna also are there. Ramakrishna Sahasrama. In fact, when I was in Bangalore, it went through nicely. I got a very good, I had very good priest there. Very orthodox person. Very sincere, honest. Luckily, we came in contact with him and he became very much devoted to ashram. Whenever I call for him, he would immediately come. So, we fixed up the program. About uh, 50, 100 people joining together and uh, doing this Homa, Havan, and with Swahakara. And uh, he adopted this Sri Ramakrishna for the mantras. It went off very well. People loved it and loved it. So, like that, what is needed is, 
you must engage yourself in spiritual activities. That's what I want to say. Use the facility in a nice way. People spend millions of dollars for constructing temple, for constructing a meditation hall, but hardly one man will be sitting there. You go and see Baha'i temple. I have seen that. Nobody, huge temple, and there they have appointed. A, I don't know what they, they have got a particular name. They are paid for it. So what they do exactly morning at eleven o'clock, two two ladies come. That is their they have been given the job. What they do? One lady goes and lights the lamp, etc. At eleven o'clock, another lady reads. Audience only those two. Capacity of the hall two thousand people can sit. First class hall, magnificent hall. You really feel that once once you go inside, you feel really remarkable. But people are not there to. They they spend money, but they don't use it. Finally, it is kept in the hands of two people. For that two people, why should they have to spend two hundred million dollars for that hall? Now I am just giving you example like that. Or we have become like that. We are we are so weak. We we can't pursue things because our mind is divided, terribly divided into so many divisions and subdivisions. It is ruptured actually. Mind is ruptured. Mind has developed cracks. The result is. You are not. You are not able to think properly. You are not able to act properly. You are. You are in a terrible state of helplessness. At least you are aware of it. To that extent, you are fortunate. At least you are aware. That awareness at least should bring you to God. <laughs> about your question, I have answered about uh, from uh, chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean. And quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self, down deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord. In each and every name, thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy! How huge then is my wretchedness! Who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name? O oh, my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself; give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and Soul of the Universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath thy feet. O oh, how I long for the day when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet, let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who steerest the hearts of their devotees, <coughs> do with me what thou wilt, <coughs> for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers. May all realize what is good. May all be actuated by noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy. May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good betide all people. 
May the sovereign and righteous slay all the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.